Another abduction in the north as bandits abduct women and children in Zamfara State. And if coup plotters are pardoned, why not bandits, says Sheikh Gumi. Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mariana Cole. Despite the order given to security agents to crack down on bandits disturbing the peace of Zamfara State, gunmen suspected to be bandits have attacked Ruan Tofa in Maru local government area of Zamfara State, kidnapping several persons, mainly women and children. Well, to discuss this with me is security expert Dennis Macri and political analyst Francis Chilaka. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining the conversation. Good evening. Thank you very much. All right, so I'm going to start with you, Mr. Amakri. Obviously, you are the security expert here. I mean, does this mean that this kidnap, I mean, it's barely 24 hours after the girls were returned safely, and then we have another set of people being abducted. Does this mean that the bandits have no respect for what the government has said should be in place in Zamfara State. It was first declared a no-fly zone. They said shoot at sight. I mean, literally, there was a riot action, uh, 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 a riot act read against these people. But it looks more like they have no regards for the statements by the federal government, even the security agencies. What does this mean? You don't go, thank you for having me. Um, you don't go into a uh, gentleman's agreement with bandits, criminals. That is what we've been saying. If you remember very well, uh, we also mentioned it. A lot of security practitioners have even mentioned it that there are going to be more attacks. In fact, there will be more attacks after this one that we have right now because um, we are dealing with it wrongly. We are negotiating with bandits and paying them money. So they will continue to come and harass us so that we'll get more money. I'm sorry, maybe yeah, you know so maybe you know something that we don't know. You're saying we are negotiating, but the last time I checked, the presidency did say that there was not going to be any negotiations between them no, the and these no. and these bandits. Maybe you know something that we don't know. Please um, furnish us with no, this information. The president said that there will be no amnesty for bandits. That's what he said. Well, they, also asked, yes, they yes. also asked that the president come dialogue with them and negotiate, and the presidency kicked against that. So what they negotiations are you talking about? They dialogue with them. See, they are trying to make nonsense of our country. You know, ragtag criminals hanging out in the bush want our president to come and dialogue with them, you know? What an insult. But the president is very clear about it. No amnesty for them. People that are negotiating can go ahead and negotiate to get the girls out. But zero tolerance to ransom payment. But that is the area that I think we are having problems now. Because apparently, ransoms are being paid. And when the state governments go ahead and do that, they will still take more people and more ransom will be paid. Interesting. Um, is it enough? Because um, I know that the, the, um, the this chief security, the NSA boss rather, had spoken to us and spoken directly to the bandits um, via that press briefing saying, there was going to be a crackdown. But now it looks like maybe that crackdown is not enough. So what can be done seriously to send a message? Because we were, we were all hoping that this message by the NSA boss was somewhat going to send sh shivers or coal, uh, you know, through the spines of these people. But it, it seems more like what, pouring water on the back of a chicken. Oh, yeah, it's more like that because they've taken us for granted. If somebody has been fighting with you for over 10 years and you've not been able to decisively deal with that person, you know, the person will assume that whatever you say is just smoke. There's nothing going to come out of it. 
But I want the uh, National Security Advisor and the new service chiefs to show these boys that, yes, they are up against the task by dealing with them decisively. Because, honestly, this is not the kind of ragtag boys that are going to start the Nigerian Army. Give, uh, give the Nigerian Army what they want, you know, support them fully with intelligence, and then let them go ahead and do what they have to do. All right, Francis, um, this question's for you. You, are, you and I, obviously, we are n not necessarily security experts. We are people who watch and analyze the stories that break every day. And, I mean, there was a mob action yesterday amidst the return of these girls um, to their families and their friends. We saw that video where, you know, uh, the, the security agents were shooting in the air because, you know, something crazy happened uh, in Zamfara State. And then there was a curfew that was imposed because of that mob action, um, a, a dusk till dawn curfew. One would have hoped that while there is a curfew, security will be placed in different places to make sure that, well, these girls have come back home safe. Why don't we have more security to be on the lookout? But then barely 24 hours later, women and children are taken. What exactly do you think is going on? Um, well, <laughs> This, this whole thing about the bandits uh, and then the security challenge, it's, it's becoming like a child's thing. Uh, in the sense that we really think this government, uh, up to one week, to declare iPod as a kind of good. And I, I believe that a lot of been achieved since iPod was declared a kind of good. I do not know why this government is finding it difficult to declare either they call them Boko Haram, they call them bandits, or whatever name they have decided to adopt for them as a terrorist group. Because when you do that, automatically they become an endangered species. But what we have playing out in Nigeria today is what children used to play days back you know, police and thief arrangement. Where, you know, the children are running around and some are claiming to be police and all of that. But I would say that this government has not shown the political will with which to disseminate, to dismiss these bandits or whatever name they want to call them. If Mr. President has, like you said, or like we were told, he has said, that anybody carrying an AK-47 should be shot at sight. It still does not pass the message because we need a situation where we declare them a terrorist group. And when we do that, I am telling you a lot of things we're trying to do. Well, Fr Francis, it's a, a bit difficult to hear you. you. You keep going in and out, but I'm going to post my next question to um, Mr. Macri. Um, there was a no fly zone um, that was declared over Zamfara State, obviously. Um, this way, these bandits or whatever, whether they're Boko Haram, would not be getting the guns and the food and all of the things that they get, you know, via helicopter or however. In other words, that meant, that, that meant more like no movement for them. So they were stuck where they are. Again, there was a stop to mining activities, which also was part of some of the problems, apparently, that were that the people of Zamfara State were experiencing. Um, one would think that this would have brought some peace and calm to Zamfara State, at least give them the people in that area some respite. Um, but it, it seems like the talking tough and all of this didn't just, it didn't really match the action that the government and security agencies are putting out. So why not uh, block no. the talk? Yeah, there are two things there right now uh, from what you've just said. There are two things. One is the no-fly zone and the, 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 the stoppage of my, uh, mining, illegal mining. So those are the two things going on there. Then, of course, um, these things will have to take uh, some effect, not immediate effect, but later. I, I, I will explain. The no-fly zone is because there are people who are flying into Zamfara and dropping guns and collecting gold, mined precious stones, collect the gold and then fly out of the country. 
Now, I was expecting that when this happened, and when the, when the security agencies come to know about this, they should have gone ahead and um, declare a no-fly zone all over the country. It means we are not monitoring our airspace. That's the meaning of it. Because when you are having no-fly zone in the Zamfara, they, 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 that means they, they come in either through Niger or from Bele Republic or Cameroon into Nigeria and drop their guns for these guys and collect the gold and go away. So why don't you go and give a blanket no-fly zone or monitor the airspace effectively so that we don't have all these uh, uh, proliferation of uh, um, small arms and light weapons. But if you declare a blanket no-fly zone, it does, I mean, it will affect other states and other things that could be happening for them. I mean, other than the no, no flying in of arms. It, it works like this. It works like this. Uh, the, the, the monitoring of fly zone is one that will permit the security agencies, especially the Air Force, to monitor all flights in the air. You know, there are, there are some countries that it, will isn't, say, isn't that the case you right? cannot fly into I'm, I'm Nigeria. So, I'm, sorry to, I'm sorry to speak over you, sir. Isn't that supposed yeah. to be the case normally, that all flights that are coming in and out of a country be monitored um, for safety reasons, especially for a country like ours that's facing terrorism? No, right now, the people monitoring those flights are the air traffic controllers. They are civilians. They monitor flights. They ask you who you are, where you are going, where you are coming from, and then they give you clearance to land. But this, this bandit, uh, this, should I say, uh, these uh, illegal flights have been coming in, maybe at the big, uh, thick of night, drop something and go away, sometimes below the radar. So what they should do is to allow the Air Force to start monitoring all the flights that are coming and be ready to respond. Because if they see an illegal flight in, in the country, within our borders, some jets should go out after them. And that's how it works. Yeah. So right now, the, the flight zone in uh, Zamfara, um, I think they should extend it because Zamfara is not a border, a border uh, state. It is, uh, you know, there are other states through which they will fly into before they get to Zamfara. Hmm. Well, Francis, let's, let me come back to you with this question. Uh, some of the villagers um, who spoke with newsmen right after uh, the abduction of women and children uh, did mention the fact that they were very, very um, angry at security agencies within that area because when they noticed that the bandits were coming into their village, certain people were calling security agents. They were calling, on, calling them on the phone. They sent them messages. There were SOSs sent out to security agencies and no one showed up till after the bandits were done and taken 60, if not more people, away. So it makes me really wonder how proactive security should be in areas that are trouble spots. Uh, is this uh, well, the question of the matter is that security is a big challenge to every state and every local government in Nigeria. And it is sad, so we need to say it the way it is. 300 and something children were, first of all, kidnapped from the school. And nobody has told us how these children were moved from their school to wherever they were taken to. And I keep asking, these bandits or these kidnappers, do they call the Nigerian bosses, do they call the Nigerian bosses? They took off the train, they took off the, uh, the caterpillar or what. What did they really come with to be able to move 300 children? Now we have another situation in our hands 16 women and children. As it was for the school children, the security agencies were not going to be found. The same has happened to this new set of kidnapping that has taken place. It simply shows that what uh, security architecture is faulty. 
They don't have intel. And the response to situations is very, very low. It's at its abysmal low. So the thing is that the government needs to begin to think as in their toolbox. These areas that have become hot for kidnappers should have more security people attached to them. And the security men should be too far off. It's either their phones or whatever gadgets that can be used to reach them. Or they're not available to the villagers, to the, to the head of the villages. You know, it is embarrassing that bandits can actually come and operate for one hour, two hours, and you do not see any security agent. Hmm. It is as if our security agency were all asleep and don't wake up from their slumber when the crime has already been committed. Hmm. So Mr. President has a lot of work to do. Even with his new service chief, they need to begin to think and think their team works. Okay. I'm throwing the same question back to you, uh, Mr. Macri. What does this say about security? Because again, I asked this at the beginning of the, the, the conversation. You know that these are troubled spots. You know that these are targets. Why are those places? I mean, I know how stretched our security agencies are. That is not something that is you know, far from us. But when you know that a place is a soft target or you know, is a troubled spot, should we not have at least people stationed around there that can reach out to their colleagues if something happens? I mean, for this, in this situation, people actually were calling, but no help came. Yeah, um, uh, not, not uh, strange at all, because um, that is the failure in response that our police, even in the cities, in the cities have got. You know, if you have a problem in your estate or wherever, and call them, you know, it will take them a long time to come. Uh, except in Lagos, where the uh, rapid response people are trying to minimize the response time to about 15 minutes. Even 15 minutes is a long time, but if response have, has happened in 15 minutes, it will take, it will be difficult for all these bandits to carry these people away. And if the response is coming not only from one side, but from different, from Sokoto, from uh, Katsina, from, you know, all around the uh, Zamfara state, you know, they, 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 they will feel that they've been uh, surrounded and then, of course, dealt with. But they know. I think they are very, very much aware that our response system is bad. And that's what the service chiefs have to do right now. Because I think the time for talking is over. We've, we've discussed this all over the place. Another, another abduction is going to come up in the next one or two weeks. So what are we doing? We have to start putting the structure in place. We have to start putting the structure in place, you know, to handle this thing. I'm sorry, I, I, I don't want to sound like a pessimist, or, but I mean, we've had years. I mean, from Chibok to Dapchi and to the Kanka, we've had years to put structures in place. So I'm wondering what magic is going, again, I'm not a pessimist, but what magic can be done between now and the next time, God forbid, if this happens again? Right now, I think the police and the, uh, the security agencies